recall fatigue amongst consumers. It may seem like there's always something going on. Yeah, you hear about them all the time. One recall after another. Everything from food and cars, even things you use every day like water bottles and blenders. Sometimes it can be hard to keep up with the latest items being pulled from shelves and to actually know what you can do to get your items fixed or replaced. These questions were raised in our newsroom just recently after several people got a letter about the Honda recall. The car giant is recalling 2.6 million cars in the U.S. because the fuel pump inside the fuel tank could fail, causing the car to stall while driving. But here's the concern my coworkers had in the letter. It says the replacement parts won't be available until the fall of 2024. So what should you do while you wait for that part? So if you're driving your Honda and you've not had any problems with stalling or not getting enough fuel to your engine, uh, for me, I would keep driving and just, you know, keep checking in with that local dealership. If you start to experience problems, that's when I would start to worry. I wouldn't let, you know, the, the concept of potential failure years from now stop me from driving today. So far, there have been no reported crashes linked to this recall. But if you do experience a problem, you should call the dealership and then contact Honda. Well, nearly 5 million popular portable blenders were recently recalled because of potentially serious safety issues. Now, we're going to show you the issues and how Consumer Reports put the newly designed replacement to the test. Yeah, the blender blades are not supposed to do that. The Blendjet 2 is one of the most popular portable blenders on the market. It's inexpensive, it's easy to use, but you need to turn your blender over and check for serial numbers beginning with four digits between 5201 and 5542. These models are being recalled. There have been several hundred complaints of the blades breaking, reports of melting charging wires, and a battery that caught fire. So if your model was recalled, Blendjet will send you a replacement base with thicker blades and better electronics. Consumers should immediately stop using the recalled blenders and contact Blendjet for a free replacement base. The redesigned Blendjet 2 with the new base passed the Consumer Reports ice test. You know you have a reconfigured base if the four digits on the bottom start with 5543 or higher. So what I want you to do, get a phone out, take a screenshot. The recalled blender numbers are on the left-hand side of the screen. The reconfigured blender numbers are on the right-hand side. Again, the company is going to replace the base for any recalled blenders free of charge. There are resources and links in the Two Wants to Know section. All right, this is something that we've talked about before, and it isn't a recall, but it could potentially be a health risk. Stanley cups and lead. All right, so truth is, there is lead on the Stanley Cup, not in the Stanley Cup. So let me show you where it is. It is on the very bottom of the Stanley Cup. When you flip it over, you see the logo button and under the button is a lead piece and it's called a ceiling dot. Stanley says the pellet or that ceiling dot is completely covered and enclosed by a stainless steel cover, making it inaccessible to you. But there are health complications for someone who comes into contact with lead, especially if that button comes off. Doctors say lead is actually a naturally occurring element, even found in our soil. But in this case, natural doesn't really equate to healthy. With exposure over time, you can certainly find um, some serious health effects if that exposure is uh, repeated and at high levels. The average lead level is somewhere uh, less than 10 for adults. And so we do have some exposure on a, a regular basis, and that's something to be expected. The important thing to know is that it's chronic high levels of exposure that could potentially cause the harm. So if you do own a Stanley Cup, just make sure you're keeping it clean. They're dishwasher safe. That might be the best and easiest option. Otherwise, separate all parts of the tumbler, hand wash it with warm water, and make sure it doesn't have that logo popped off. Now, when it comes to food recalls, most of the time it's due to exposure to things like E. coli, salmonella, uh, listeria. But what are the real dangers of those, and how can you tell if you may have gotten exposed? What should you do if you get sick? We're going to start with E. coli. Symptoms start showing two to four days after you're exposed. 
Symptoms can include severe stomach cramps, diarrhea, vomiting. Just 5 to 10% of those people exposed to E. coli develop life-threatening problems. Common food sources include raw or undercooked beef, raw milk and juice, raw veggies such as lettuce, unsafe water, Salmonella symptoms, they're very similar, similar to like diarrhea, cramps, and fever, but those can start as quick as six hours after being exposed. Illnesses typically last four to seven days. Young children, older adults, and those with weaker immune systems should that get severely ill, they need to be hospitalized. It is typically, though, treated with antibiotics. As for listeria, most people get symptoms similar to the flu, like muscle aches, fatigue, dizziness. The bacteria is most likely to sicken those who are pregnant or older adults with a weakened immune system. It can be found in soft cheese, unheated deli meats, and some raw vegetables as well, like sprouts. So what happens if you do get sick? Well, you should report it to your local health department, not the TV station, the health department. Without this kind of reporting to the health department, agencies like the CDC don't know that there is a problem and they can't stop others from getting sick. You know, if you missed any of this information, you're going to be able to find it in the 2 Wants to Know section.